Hello and welcome at long last. Tomorrow, or today when you're watching this video, I will be streaming Age of Empires 4 again. Yes! My break has been, been about six weeks or so. Before that, of course, I played intensively for like four to five uh, months and then took a little bit of a break right after N4C, which was a phenomenal tournament, by the way. At such a good time, but you probably know that. Now it's time for the new patch, the Age of Empires 4 Season 1 update release notes. This is called the Spring Patch. It brings ranked, new hotkey changes, and a number of different things as well. Ranked is going to go live in six days from now, on April 13th. You can find out more about that, of course, on this website. I will link this in the description below. And my last couple of videos where I also went through the ranked uh, and the season and the content editor changes. And that's coming as well. Content editor has been on the beta server already. It's called the PUP, the patch update preview or something. Uh, and on the PUP, people already made a slew of different maps. User-generated content is the lifeblood of any game, both for casuals and for long-term try-hard players. And those maps, if they were saved locally by the content creators, they can immediately re-upload them. So I expect many cool new mods and, and maps to be live when the patch drops live on April 7th, which is today. So let's go through the, the change log and find out what is uh, coming. We're thrilled to officially welcome you to the AOE4 Season 1 Festival of Ages, our first major update of 2022, launching at Pacific Time, April 7th. Check, check our social cha channels for exact timing. And I believe it's like 8 p.m. CEST, which is Amsterdam time, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll check. As we shared with our updated, updated roadmap, our view for these major updates is that we should be offering something for everyone, whether you're a competitive player, a campaign enthusiast, or someone who's eager to get your hands on the AOE4 content editor. We hope you'll enjoy diving right into our largest set of release notes to date. Read on to learn more about new features coming to Age of Empires 4 tomorrow, how we are, sorry, I, I was just summoning chat, uh, how we're approaching civilization and map balance and more below. We'll also spend some time sharing what we learned from our first ever public update preview and some of what we have planned following the official release of the season one update. As a reminder, we've already shared a deep dive. No. And you can find my uh, vi videos about that here on Grubby AOE as well. Upon updating to this patch, you will no longer be able to utilize replays from the previous updates. We wanted to extend a quick thank you to those of you who have joined in on the 1v1 Ranked Seasons Preview and Public Update Preview. Not only did you arm us with knowledge we'll continue to apply in the future, but you helped us properly to ready up for the Season 1 update. With a close look, you'll notice a number of changes made since these previews, but we wanted to call out a few. Ranked season tier techno ranked season tier terminology and artwork more closely align with the number of weapons present on each badge matching the tier. In the image below, we're showing the badges for tier three, like gold three. Ah, I gave this as a feedback. I guess I guess I was not the only one. Before this meant division three out of diamonds, which meant the lowest one being the highest. You get. Uh, actually, wait, did they change it? Three weapons is the highest tier, tier three. Ah, so they swapped the numbers. Before one was the highest, now three is the highest? In the image below, we're showing the badges for tier three, like gold three. Actually, I don't know if it, I don't know if they flipped it. They say they flipped it, right? They say they changed it. I'm not sure if they flipped it. I know it didn't make sense to me before, I need to figure out like how it is now actually. I don't actually get it yet. They say it's tier three, but they don't specify whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Anyway, moving on. Several balance changes were made with PUP feedback in mind. Stonewall tower cast increased from 200 to 300 stone. That's a good change. They're way too powerful. Uh, herbal medicine technology for the Delhi Sultanate has been moved from Dark Ages to Castle Age. 
that's a good change. It's a very powerful technology that dominates in feudal sacred site battles. You bring six monks and you bring six scholars with you and things don't die under a full 20 loaded garrisoned town center. Nice change. The Chinese Imperial official is once again 20 seconds, not 30 anymore. There was a lot of criticism about this on Reddit and some concern from early testing they managed and they uh, went ahead and reverted that for now. Delhi Sultanate and Abbasid Orchard bonus is going to be reduced from 250 extra food up from 250 all the way to 500 to just 100. So it's going to be 350 instead of 250. They still get a solid bonus, but it doesn't give them a safe source of food adjacent to the town center uh, for as long anymore as uh, before. And I think that's a solid change. Both Sultanate and Abbasid are very powerful civilizations right now, and this is a clean way of keeping the unique mechanic, and they still have the unique 13 villager capacity to carry orchard berries, while reducing the safety of it. 350 total, up from 250 baseline and down from 500 uh, in the previous patch. Rus Roost Bandit Arms bonus range decreased from 1.5 to 0.5. To be clear, Springolds are 10 range normally. Every race gets a plus two Springold range bonus to their Springold with the uh, Imperial upgrade. And Roos had an extra upgrade that took them from 12 to 13 and a half. Now it's gonna be 12 and a half. My question here is, and I haven't tested this, is 12 and a half good enough to justify the expense bringing it up from 12 and i wonder you're gonna get first hit i suppose but it's not gonna be feeling like you're shooting with impunity i like the change even if it means it never gets taken again and i might be wrong and it might get taken but it's that's a good change 13 and a half was a bit too much pup participants also called out a number of bugs yeah mongol still has 13 range correct so mooks but they can't hide behind walls at least. So it doesn't seem to be as big of an issue. No keeps, no walls means that a sprinkled shootout is not as common for Mongols. Attempting to observe a modded game where you do not have the same mods enabled should no longer result in a crash. Oh, nice. I wonder if it preloads them as you begin to observe a modded game. Perhaps a longer load in time to make sure that you can watch. Improvements made to sheep to allow for easier selection. I'm looking forward to that one. Hopefully it will mean that you can target fire villagers that are gathering on top of tw uh, 10 sheep corpses, which currently is not possible. We'll test it. Selection tools should now prioritize siege unit selection over building selection when they overlap with a building. That's nice. Uh, fixed an issue from the PUP where custom games that require mods sometimes do not show up as modded in the custom game browser. And fixed an issue found in the PUP where infantry could occasionally sneak through palisade walls near bastions. I don't know what bastions are, but I did have that bug on the pub where you could sneak through uh, corner partitions of wooden walls. Maybe that's what they mean. And maybe it's where it's on a hill. Maybe that's what they call a bastion, where a palisade is on top of a hill, a visual hill, and then it creates like um, little support to make sure that the palisade is still equally long. It creates like a support structure that has only a visual purpose. Maybe that was the reason that they could sneak past. I don't know. Maybe that's what they call a bastion. Introducing the Age of Empires for Content Editor beta, with this powerful tool, creators are invited to embrace and create their own ideas within the game and share them with the wider community. We talk more about the content editor below, including providing a quick overview of the in-house created mods launching with season one. Our first ever ranked season starts next week. Prepare your best strategies and work your way through the ranks over the next several weeks. Based on your feedback, we've also implemented the global build queue. The global build queue is visible in both gameplay and observer modes. Using the global build queue, you'll get an overview of all of your upgrades and units in queue at all times in the HUD. So they moved this from the top right to the bottom left, and I like it far more in the top right. 
I hope it's back to the top right, but I don't know. Or that we get an option. But I fear it's still bottom left, because that's the last thing I saw. We'll see. It's not something that they're not going to be able to change if they get enough feedback about it. Click specific tiles within the global build queue to select the building, the unit, or upgrade is queuing within. Yes, nice. Or the unit itself for the build on the field siege units. Nice. And optionally move the camera to that location based on your current final cycle setting. Nice. Uh, also, is it top right? I used to chill. Uh, also, it's a bug fix for the invisible wall glitch where you had to wall, but infantry went through that wall segment because of a small glitch. I see, I see. Uh, global build queue can be disabled and set or set to upgrades only to the in-game settings. Control click tiles in the global build queue to cancel the most recently queued item in the stack. Ah. Okay. It, wouldn't it be nice if you could cancel one of your choice, not just the most recently queued item? Like if I click on the middle unit, I would want to probably cancel that. Use hotkeys to cycle between show all, upgrades only, and hide. The default hotkey for this is Ctrl Shift Q. A bastion is a projection out from a wall, sort of a link, sort of link a tower, like a tower, but basically just a kink in the wall to create more angles for the defenders. Okay, yeah, that's what happened to me. Uh, a bastion, a corner, let's say. We know you've been looking for improved hotkeys, and while we still have some work underway and plan for the future, Season 1 includes a number of exciting changes. For a deeper in-depth look, check out the keyboard controls and quality of life section below. We've added the ability to rebind hotkeys mouse 3 and 4 and 5. Quickly toggle on or off control groups exclusivity, or any number of new hotkeys to add or remove a unit from a control group. You'll also be able to come to bind other commands to the Alt and Shift keys. Nice. We're aware that hotkeys bound to Alt, Shift or Control can lose functionality after restarting the game and we're working on a fix for this. Most recently queued in the stack, so if three barracks are training Spearmen, the latest Spearmen will be cancelled. Right. But they said in the global build queue. You could already do that in a triple barracks, Talabro. Oh. Maybe... Uh, maybe if you cancel a Spearman in the middle, it does the latest Spearman. But if you cancel a Knight in the middle, it does the latest Knight. That might be it, Talabrel. That would be desirable functionality. That would be really sweet, actually. That's probably how it is, too. I think you probably fixed, solved it. Additional categories have been added to the hotkey menu to improve navigation. And there's new global hotkeys that enable you to cycle or select all buildings of a specific type cancel items in production queues, safe camera locations, and much more. Yeah, I think you're right, Faramir Rat, as well. The Fog of War is revealed to all players when the game is over. Nice. There's a new reveal on elimination setting for custom games, revealing the Fog of War to eliminated players. Camera hotkeys, nice. Very, very important, actually. It's possible to navigate to the map after being eliminated or when the game is over in skirmish and multiplayer games. Where does it say camera, actually? Oh, yeah, safe camera locations. That is so good. That is so good. I use that a lot in StarCraft. Introducing the patrol move in game. Ah, that's huge. Patrol allows units to move along a path and attack any enemies they see. You can now use the random civilization selection option when setting up for a match. We're unveiling a brand new Art of War challenge with advanced combat. Refine your strategy and challenge yourself to earn gold. Advanced combat. A Q dodging, a Q dodging cooldown system has been added that applies a 5, 15, 30 and 60 minute lockout to quick match and ranked queues. The cooldown escalates for each queue dodge performed following the first. I think this is controversial. 
if Boulder Bay is still part of the map pool, and I think it is, well, we'll, 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 we'll see, maybe it isn't. But if Boulder Bay is still part of the map pool and it is not popular and there's no veto system and it's part of either quick match or ranked or both, and you get a five minute lockout for dodging, Boulder Bay is not in the map pool. That's good. What about Ancient Spires, Nagari, Danube River? Can't you just resign one second after a game starts to circumvent this penalty? Yes, but then you'll lose a point, right? You get a loss and you lose MMR. But yes, that will be the way around it for hardcore people that say, I don't care about my rank, I do care about good games, and I hate this map. But you'll find actually a lot of people are protecting their stats more jealously than that. But uh, let's not let's not kid ourselves that even if some maps are unpopular, people get more and more spoiled about what they dodge. It started with dodging water maps or certain water maps like Archipelago and Warring Islands, then every water map, then every camping map, and then some people cancel every open map because they want to play the camping map. And be, and then you can camp, uh, you can dodge certain players based on their mastery. You can dodge certain players based on you know them and their really skilled before you know it everyone's dodging each other so i do think something had to be done um and maybe this is good maybe this is good they'll still be dodging for people that protect their uh win rates you could just have it be that if you dodge it's a loss as well <laughs> well let's see how this goes we've made some improvements to the layout of the chinese dynasty ui the Chinese Dynasty button now fits snugly next to the official button right here. I can't see the global queue on this screenshot. And the visual style has been updated for the Chinese Dynasty UI, including the button used to expand the dialogue. Cool. Based on player feedback and data, we've made the difficulty tuning to six campaign missions. Adjustments were made to reduce the number of enemy units, in addition to smaller changes, to make the missions easier, and in some cases, shorter. North to York, Siege of Wallingford, the Combat of the Thirty, Siege of Paris, Battle of Pont Vallon, and the Battle of Formigny. Formigny? I didn't expect it needed to be easier, but let's not have a gatekeeping hardcore mentality. If that's the feedback, then, uh, you know, campaign is for people that generally don't play a lot of multiplayer. In-house mods. The team has created several interesting in-house mods to showcase various capabilities of the editor. You can find the full list below. R Royal Rumble. Be the last king standing. Achieve victory by eliminating all enemy kings while defending your own. Based on the classic AoE2 game mode, Regicide. And I showed one of these games on my other YouTube channel, youtube.com slash followgrubby, where I have a lot of Age of Empires 4 content as well. But since a couple of weeks ago, I've branched off and created Grubby AoE, so I'll definitely make sure to get the premiere uh, on this channel of Royal Rumble once again as well, in addition to every other uh, unique gameplay setting. Tom Bolos, welcome to Paradise. This map features multiple tranquil islands connected by narrow sand tombola, supports up to two players. Britain and Ireland, fight for Regency of the British Isles. This map features a landmass that resembles Britain, Wales, Scotland, and Ireland. Oh, Ireland! Battle for South Asia on the Indian subcontinent. A landmass that resembles it. The Gulch. You ever wonder why we're here? This map features a box canyon surrounded by walls on all sides. Supports up to four players. Thick woods. It's a lot of wood. Double the amount of wood available per tree. Double villagers is a tuning pack, just like thick woods. The peasants are produced two at a time for the cost of one. Dire wolves. The wolves are hungry and out for blood. All wolves have increased damage, hit points, and size. Watch out for the dogs. Mod bug fixes. Big thanks to those of you who joined us for the public update preview. We've made some fixes to mods since then. The SCAR console can now be used to debug UGC when launching with dev. Okay, this goes over my head. I haven't used this. You can pause the video here if you'd like to read this. I'm going to move on to the next point. Balance update goals. 
tighten win rates, encourage earlier conflict with deer patches, improve the feel of moving naval units and increase strategic options through more effective retreats, increase risk and counterplay when constructing buildings near the enemy forces, ensure SIF unique units stand out instead of being niche counters, make dynasty bonuses more useful for the periods of the game in which they are unlocked, and create more compelling decision-making around landmark picks. All civilizations, core units, and field construction build time of the Springled increased from 30 to 80, Mangonel from 40 to 80, and Traction Trebuchet from 35 to 80. And that's the Mongol version, of course. I think all of these changes are fantastic. Field construction is currently very powerful, and these are good changes. Scout Hunting Bow Reload Time goes from 2 to 1. Scout Melee Weapon Cooldown reduced from 4 to 2. And Scout Melee Weapon Damage reduced from 4 to 2. What this means is that you can more effectively fight for hunts again from both sides, the Rus and the Rus opponents. Um, it's going to feel more dynamic. I think it'll be more fun again because it felt kind of slow and rusty after the Animation Council was remo removed here. Scout Melee Weapon uh, reduction means that scouts will be having a lower DPS against units that have any points of melee armor at all. And I think that's a good change. Scouts are still quite effective in military compositions and they'll be a bit worse now. Nice. Economy. Villager hunted meat carry capacity has been straight up buffed from the baseline from 10 to 25. This used to be in techniques. The meat carry capacity bonus has been removed because it's been embedded, baseline. Harvest rate from 10 to 15%. So now you have, again, a bit more reason to actually get it, right? And the research time is faster from 75 to 45. Good changes. Really good changes. So uh, they really want people to spread themselves more thin. Every Sif, not just uh, one Sif or two Sif that happen to be able to get out there, get the deer, either with the pro scouts or without with survival techniques or without, uh, get those deer and uh, fight across many different places in that fun, typical Age of Empires fashion. Let's see how it goes. I think it's good changes. Yeah, blacksmith armor upgrade melee is going to be really effective into scouts deep chill, but scouts were not benefiting from melee damage upgrades uh, before already. As far as I know. Improved the responsiveness of small and medium ships. Arrow ships can no longer fire while moving. Good. No more of that Dao and Loja attack ship uh, Skaldagri. They were like tracers, like in Hats. Extended lines research time reduced from 75 to 45. This is an unpopular upgrade in general. Drift nets as well. Good. Galley population reduced from 4 to 3. Junk pop from 4 to 2, Galias population from 6 to 5, and attack ship ranged armor reduced by 1, except for the French Hulk. So every attack ship, huh? One less ranged armor. So arrow ships are going to be better in general. So it's no longer just a rush to the castle age. Ships are killing each other faster. Interesting. And they'll take more damage from archers as well, which I see that as a good thing in general. Even though arches are still not going to be attack ships in general. Bug glass spring old weapon is from 50 to 70. That means it can now deal 20 damage to docks instead of 1. Which is a great change. Keep in mind that it doesn't just do 20. It spins like the others. So it's 20 times 2. Others, other ballista ships do 50 times 2. But it also has those arrows. It's that unique, actually kind of fun ship. And every arrow does 1 damage. It's not a lot, but effectively it'll be like a bug glass doing 25 damage when another ship is doing 50. So it'll be half as effective against docks, but no longer like 10 times less effective. Good change. Bagla attack speed has been reduced a bit, which makes sense to compensate. Warship formation, spy, uh, formation spacing reduced, so they'll take up less collision size and Baojuan weapon range reduced. Good, because this one is the king of the seas. Naval Navigator no longer gives plus one weapon range. Increased side range improvement from one to four. I like that. You can see demo ships coming from further away, even though those haven't been as good as before. But you can also do better scouting to see raids coming. 
And you'll have to get the upgrade for that and not just to get that range and have vision be immaterial. Updated the selection area for all fishing deposits to match the visual. This resolves issues where deep fish were harder to select when surrounded. Rams can no longer target naval. I think that's a pity. And galley down and junk text has been updated to indicate the benefit from ranged blacksmith technology only. Patrol is going to change water a lot as well. True. When is this patch coming out? In uh, f 14 hours from the reading of this and in several hours from the uploading of this on YouTube in just a few hours. And my stream will be live in a couple of hours. So, uh, or earlier, I don't 100% know. Maybe it's live already during the uploading of this video. Well, why don't you go ahead and check it out now and make sure to hit that follow button. Slam that follow button. Core buildings and upgrades. Buildings under construction re receive 50% more damage. That means they're still taking one damage from archers because archers do one damage and it's rounded down. I asked about this. But they'll take a lot more damage from springolds, right? Springolds. Well, actually, no. This, this springolds is also uh, ranged damage, right? Uh, they'll take more damage from mangonels, from torches, from rams, from villagers, right? So people dropped a lot of buildings in the middle of battle and it was not easy to stop. They've tested this a lot internally and they feel like 50% is the right number. I thought maybe 100% will be good. But uh, let's see how it goes. That's a lot more than 0% extra, right? Does that mean walls also? I do believe so, yes. I do believe so, yes. Keep build time increased from 120 to 140. Good. I think keeps are very powerful. Stone wall towers build time increased from 60 to 90. Great change as well. And they repeated this one uh, from earlier in the notes. Burn boiling oil cost increase to quite a lot indeed i think that's good because it's like a default research immediately normally and it makes it not possible to bum rush keeps anymore or stonewall towers for that matter with any units good boiling oil research time has been increased greasled axles movement speed has been reduced this is siege movement good changes geometry move from university to siege workshop the cost has been reduced Ge geometry research time reduced. This is trebuchet and ram damage. So, whatever. Siege works moved from the siege workshop to uni. This is the ranged armor and health increase on siege weaponry. This locks it further away. And that's a good thing. That means that archers can actually kill mangonels with good micro. And if you get near. Removed completely from the Chinese astronomical clock tower, and it has been increasing costs as well significantly. Good change. It means less siege supremacy. Many nerfs to siege dispatch. Siege works. Research time increased from 60 to 90. More nerfs. Mongo improved version of siege works has also been made to cost 1,000 stone to correspond to this cost. And the Delhi Sultanate is going to have a longer time to research it. Good. Tight barns now is correct. Repairability now shows the correct requirements when attempting to use it on an enemy player. <laughs> Fix the bug. I'm going to repair the crap out of you, bro. Fix the bug where some units were leaving a visible ghost upon entering fog of war as if they were buildings. Units affected by this bug were rams, siege towers, bombards, and field constructed versions of Mongol and Abbasid siege units. No direct mangonel nerf. True, Sinwife. No direct mangonel nerf, but they are slower. They have, uh, it takes them longer to get that ranged armor and health upgrade. So there you go. And yeah, I, th I thought mangonel nerf is in place, but it is not there. I thought maybe it would be a good time to also nerf their damage a bit. We can actually see if there's a mangonel change coming. No, so no direct mangonel nerf yet, correct. So let's go to the race specific changes. Abbasid, Orchard, 100 bonus. Camel Archer movement speed increased a bit. Bonus damage against Spearmen less, but their baseline damage is going up. Camel Rider damage, baseline damage is going up quite a lot with less against Cavalry, but more overall. 
So both Camel Archer and Camel Rider are doing more damage to what they are not designed specifically, that single unit that they were designed to counter, doing more damage in general. The Camel Archers are a little bit faster. These changes could be huge, but you still wouldn't be massing Camel Riders into Spearman or Men at Arms, per se. They're just going to be slightly less uh, niche and more generalist. Camel Archers in particular might become fairly popular. They're already quite popular. Camel Barding now only affects Camel Riders, no longer the Archer. And Camel Barding has been moved to the stables. Faith can no longer be used to convert naval units. Luckily, I did it once in my life. I copied the demo ship and blew it up in the opponent's face. It was nice. The Abyssin Golden Age production speed bonus now properly applies to all production buildings, not just military. Wait. Villagers too? Oh, what, what did I just... Wait, what did I just do? How do I undo this? <laughs> no. My video, my YouTube video is ruined. How do I close this? There we go. <laughs> Saved. F12. <laughs> okay. So, villagers too is sick. Uh, composite bow's tooltip now correctly displays 33% attack speed instead of 25. Uh, improved processing now applies to town centers. He's, <laughs> he's editing the code. Age of boomers. <laughs> uh, the strongest wing. This is, of course, 60 buildings. It's quite a lot. Agriculture bonus. Uh, agriculture costs reduced. Agriculture research time reduced. Dude, Abbasid is going to be cracked. They're going to be so good. Grand Bazaar move from Imperial to Feudal. Grand Bazaar costs reduced. Research time reduced. Spice Roads moved to, uh, to Imperial. Spice Roads cost went up. Military wing changes. Boot camp uh, reduced from Imperial to Feudal. Cost reduction. Research time reduction. Camel Rider Shields cost reduction. Research time reduction. And uh, the Camel Support is now Imperial. This is the one that gives plus one armor. But now it's two armor and an Imperial. This is going to be sick. Imagine a couple of camels with Moss Spearman. These spears have double range. The units are all produced faster. They have boot camp bonus health. Fully upgraded elite spearmen. Now with plus two extra armor. You take 40 spears, 20 men at arms, and three camel riders and six camel archers. Unbeatable. Unbeatable. Enemy has 10 mangonels and six springles. <laughs> We'll see how it goes, mate. We'll see how it goes. Just spread. Abbasid is going to be really good. Camel support costs did go up a lot. And the research time up. Chinese ancient techniques cost increased from 150 to 350 to 200, 500. This is the building health. Right? Oh, no, no, no. This is the gathering. This is the gathering rates. Ancient techniques research time is up. It's the 8% gathering, right? Yeah. Barbican of the Sun, ra side range up. So I think we'll see some Barbican rushes. Though it does take more damage in construction. So maybe you can actually pull villagers and just kill the Barbican. And then it's GG. Imperial Spies ability from the Imperial Palace landmark now reveals villagers, traders, trade ships, fishing ships, and officials. An insidious tax fraud scheme has been discovered by our Internal Investigation Bureau. It has come to our attention that officials have been collecting taxes more often than permitted by imperial decree. An official reprimand has been issued. The guilty have been punished. Firmer rules have been enacted to prevent this corruption from happening again in the future. Fix the bug where elite fire lancer torch damage was not increasing when it upgraded to elite. So they're going to be a little bit better again, even though they're not super good right now. Fix the bug where pagodas could generate more resources than intended. Dynasty units and buildings are no longer gated when advancing to the next dynasty. Once unlocked, you can always build them. Hurrah! Hurrah. Dynasty units and buildings 
Yeah. You end dynasty movement speed no longer applies to siege. Good. Now let's do the same thing for Yam network for Mongols. Village requirement reduced from Tsang dynasty to Tang. Village cost 125. So, so this means you can build them in Dark Ages, guys, immediately. You can start with the village if you like. Village health increased from 1000 to 1500. Granary can now be made in Song. Now, granaries are very expensive. And you're not actually increasing gathering rate that much. I saw the maths on it and then I forgot it, like a millennial should. And my conclusion was that when you are running Song Dynasty, double TC build, you probably don't have wood to justify a granary immediately or anytime soon. But if you never end up going to another dynasty, which is very reasonable to believe, you make it to castle eventually, you could still make a granary if you like. And having access to it earlier is not a downside. So good. Pagoda relic resource bonus reduced from 100 to all to 50 to all. Okay. And supervised production and research speed reduced from 200 to 150%. So once again, it's two and a half times. And I agree with this. 300 is more fun, but it's crazy on blacksmith, university and production. I agree with two and a half. Uh, did you skip the granary harvest nerve? Oh yeah, yeah, the bonus from 15 to 10 with the health increased. Yeah, no, I, I did see it. I didn't read it out. Official cost changed from 150 food to 100 food, 50 gold. So I'm not sure if we're still going to be making an Imperial official the first second in the game over a villager. This will potentially slow down your um, your feudal. But keep in mind that we already had that buff of being able to carry 40 gold with IOs. So maybe you can make up for it. I will have to go and test it. Delhi Sultanate. Sanctity gold bonus reduced from 100 to 50. So you get 150 gold instead of 200. But you get 150 instead of other races that get 100. Sorry, I've been playing Warcraft 3, so I call things races again. I need to get used to sieves. Delhi starting wood reduced from 250 to 200. Herbal medicine moved to castle age. Orchard bonus. No, for real this time, guys. <laughs> Tower War Elephant has been renamed to Tower Elephant. So it's more distinct from the cousin, the War Elephant. Yeah, they had this in the notes before. It did not work. <laughs> Delhi fixed the... Shall we take bets on whether it really... Delhi fixed the bug where the Armored Beast tooltip incorrectly stated it applied to Tower War Elephants. It now correctly states it only applies to War Elephants. It would be double incorrect now because Tower War Elephant does not exist as a unit anymore. So it only applies to War Elephants. Okay, Armored Beasts. So that's how they intended it for it to be. I think it's the three armor upgrade. Uh, slow Burning Defenses is now correctly positioned in the Imperial uh, Age column in the Delhi Sultan attack tree. Tower of Victory attack speed bonus is now 20% and it's applied in a larger radius and it now fully properly applies its bonus to all melee and ranged. I'm gonna have to test that before I take your word on it because before it was doing 0.15 uh, attack change. So if you had an attack speed of 1.15, it changed it from 1.15 to one, which is not a 15% increase. We're going to have to wait and see how that works out. Love to see you back on the AOE4 train. Hey, good to see you, Dabston. Thanks for the warm welcome. Fix the bug that would sometimes reset the food income provided by Hisar Academy after producing a minute arms or night. I thought the bug was if your food ever drops to zero. Either way, they said they fixed it. Let's, uh, let's believe them on it. The compound of the defender effect is no longer active while the landmark is destroyed. Wow. Huh. So suddenly you lose the ability to build stone walls with infantry. The Delhi Sultan attack tree now lists Hone Blades under, correctly under the Castle Age. And the tech tree of slow burning defenses under Imperial. English. Meta, this is sick. Now English have both... Uh, English have both the... Uh, one of the best men at arms. 
getting Chad armor upgrade that takes them from a max of 8 to a max of 10. But they also have a slow s momentum with men at arms because they have to make them from Vanguard to Feudal, from Feudal to Castle. So they need more upgrades to bring them to it. But in the mid to late game, English men at arms are fantastic. And now you're going to be able to make them very quickly. Interesting. This is going to be very synergistic with their mass farms, uh, gold farm gathering thing, which is called enclosures. I remember. Vanguard men at arms armor increased from two to three. Ah, Abbey of Kings, Vanguard Men at Arms is actually, finally, going to be, maybe, sometimes, possibly, maybe not, possibly viable. It's still expensive to make me Vanguard Men at Arms so early in Dark Ages, but maybe on water maps? Maybe, sometimes? Maybe even without Abbey of Kings. I think actually without Abbey of Kings. A couple of Men at Arms into Council Hall, bang. Uh, it's going to be fun to experiment with. Abbey of King's healing rate increased from 4 health to 6 health per 1 second. Not just 4 per 1.5. Sick. That's 6 HPS. This is 2.66 HPS. So more than doubled, which is insane. I think we'll see a lot more of Abbey of King's. What is the counter to Dark Age MAA? Run and scream. Now the counter is your town center's defenses. In Dark Ages, you don't need to go or be anywhere yet. And Town Centers, if you can kill many men at arms, that's, uh, that's GG already, because they spend so much. It's really when you need to go outside of the Town Center, and you don't scout, and you're fighting over a dock or a distant gold mine, that's where you could be in trouble. But, yeah, you could just... Uh, you can only make spears in Dark Ages, right? Spears and scouts. So you're just going to lose the trade. But because of defender's advantage and the low economies early, you should be fine. Or maybe you won't be fine. Then everyone's going to play English and Minotaur. So we'll see. Starting wood increased for English. White Tower and Berkshire, Berkshire Palace now have visual weapon emplacements for boiling oil. Setup camp can no longer be used in combat. So quite a few nice English buffs. We saw these before. Uh, they, they could be quite good. Note, English is not top three on almost any map. Top three sifts. So it's most likely not going to break the bank. We'll see. Red Palace, visual emplacement. Pavis now increases armor by five. So Arbolitria are going to get buffed. Before, whether you had one, two, or zero armor, Pavis would take them to five uh, melee armor. And now it, it will increase it by five. So... Arbolitria are going to be a lot better into horsemen, knights, spearmen, villagers, scouts than before. How are scouts versus vanguard men at arms? Well, not good. Not good. Though the new scouts are better into vanguard men at arms, since old scouts had 4 damage every 2 seconds and the new ones have 2 damage every 1 second. So actually, the scouts now are going to have double DPS against Vanguard Men at Arms than the old scouts would have had against the new <laughs> Vanguard Men at Arms. Oh, Pavisa's ranged armor? Okay, okay, okay. So they're going to be a little better than before against enemy ranged when you activate the Pavisa ability. Thanks for correcting me on that. Military Siege Engineer UI now matches the other... I don't play a lot of French. Now matches the other civilization, has the correct icon. Royal Knight, help text updated to reflect proper duration of bonus after successful charge attack. Relics in Recknitz, reduced from 3 to 2. Burgrave Palace now produces infantry 400% faster. And what it doesn't say, but has been tested and confirmed, it also gets research 5 times as fast. In addition to units... So a powerful alternative to Recknitz with its nerf and the simultaneous buff to Burgrave. I'm going to enjoy trying out double town center openers for Holy Roman to transition into Burgrave Palace. Mine work, Palace, research, discount, increase from 25 to 30. Nice. And the research speed up by 30. Again, powerful alternative to Aachen Chapel. It's going to be exciting, both for chrono-boosted Protoss cheese, as well as for just an alternative way to play, to get several key upgrades and be safer or to fight better. Cool. 
Palace of Swabia villager production has been nerfed from 75 to 66. All, all good, all good. Good nerf. Inspired warriors now last 60 seconds. I'm gonna try out battle prelates again. Marching drills cost has been reduced, which is good. It was too expensive, uh, in my opinion anyway. Uh, the marching drills research time has been reduced and it affects prelates. I was a bit concerned about this one, but it looks like they have kept this for now. Let's see how it goes. We're gonna have very fast prelates. And maybe they really want to see that bet battle prelate in action. And that's why they're keeping it. But I'm concerned about the side effects on relic retrieval. Unless they are also slower while carrying a relic. Holy Roman got a lot of buffs. Elsbach Palace now has visual emplacement. Uh, easier to locate your prelates. You can no longer go over 25% attack speed bonus with relics and docks. The wonder can now use emergency repair. Docks can now use emergency repair. Keeps no longer grant a sprinkled when a unit is garrisoned. Apparently, the sprinkled emplacement was not researched yet. Relics placed in docks no longer increase enemy attack ships. <laughs> and fix the bug where Holy Roman galley arch ship was firing one extra arrow. How did they discover that? Because I, I, I tried to count those arrows and I could not. Uh, Mongols textiles improved has been added to the town center available in Castle Age, which gives 100 health villagers. Mongol buffs. The Mongol landmark town center can be packed while at maximum pop. By the way, I do think 100 health villagers fits Mongols. Because they can't get walls and keeps. I do think it fits them. And if Mongols were not OP, but they were like weak or average, I would support this change. And they still need to pay for it. Um, if uh, if Mongols are very strong, then I don't think it is fitting to buff them in this way. I still think Yam needs nerf, but let's read the rest and see how it goes, of course. The Mongol landmark town center can be now be packed while at maximum pop. Improved biology now provides only 10% health instead of 15. Uh, fix some bugs. Carganet Palace now produces Magidai more slowly. <laughs> this is bad. And it got nerfed. Stone Commerce help text changed. The Khan Defense Arrow tooltip no longer incorrectly states that it gives armor. Plus 3. It gives plus 2. The unpack ability of Mago structures now searches for the closest valid placement location near the cursor. The same way that regular building placement does. Okay, I hope it's going to be a bit easier to unpack because I found it to be a bit uh, meh as well. Yam no longer applies to siege. Good. Good, 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 good. That's really good. Roos, warrior monk weapon range increased from 115 to 3. I've talked about this before. I like the change. Warrior Monk charge weapon range increased and Horse Archer precision technology range bonus reduced. A strange nerf for a pretty fun unit that doesn't see a lot of play anymore. And no Castle Age con nerf, which I thought should be done. Too much damage and too much range. Horse Archer precision technology research time reduced. Streltsy double time ability no longer quickens their static deployment ability. That's a nerf to Streltsy, that's good. Banded Arms, we read about this before. Golden Gate trade buttons have been shifted around to match market, good. Lodja attack ships now have the correct upgrades applied after conversion. Fix some bugs. And Lodja fishing ship, population, two. Wood, 150, doubled, doubled. Train time, not quite doubled. Health, doubled. Fish gathering rate, almost doubled. Shoreline fish gathering rate, almost doubled. Uh, actually, yeah, almost doubled. So, uh, this is going to create some changes to roost on water maps, and it's mostly a nerf. 1v1 micro map size resource balancing has received a pass. On open maps like Lipany and Dry Arabia, objects like relics, highly decor. Objects like relics, gold deposits, and stone deposits are now spawning in a tighter band for each player. So, AKA, I've read this before, and it's quite wordy, and you can read it and you can pause it, uh, more fair. 
Mountain Pass Mongolian Heights. They are actually putting three relics on both sides. Custom tuning. And which is more fair, because otherwise there's always one that has three and one that has... It's actually a buff. These fishing ships are crazy. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. Though, you get going more slowly, Lidacore. I don't want AoE 2, I like randomness. Yeah, but there's it's a source of common complaints, Chauncey Wilson, that there's uh, three relics on one side and two on the other, and then the Holy Roman Empire player gets three, the other gets two. Sacred sites have had their spawn parameters narrowed to help them spawn more evenly. Negari, mountain ranges have been shortened slightly to provide a more consistent central lake and mountain configuration. Cool, we're gonna try all of these maps. Uh, it's getting kind of long, so I'm not going to read all, out all this, but feel free to pause and look. I have read these before. I don't see any changes in them uh, from the previous notes. So feel free to pause and check out Black Forest and Boulder Bay changes, as well as Danube River and Mountain Pass as well. Uh, confluence, more even gold spawn distribution. And stone bridges are back, so you no longer need to do a wall yourself across. You can have a safe dock here. And then ancient spires changes, Altai, Mongolian height changes. I'll give you that chance to pause on these as well. Hill and Dale, fewer wolves. Yeah, I read these before. King of the Hill. Added maps, mega random. <sighs> uh, lots of stone and gold here. Uh, Mega random. Uh, crafted map valley battle. Map bug fixes. Stealth ocean areas. Have received a different tile to make it more visible. Some extra bug fixes. Fog of war would sometimes snap to locations overlapping trees or resource deposits, causing them not to be built once the village arrives. Yes! Buildings placed in fog of war would snap to locations overlapping. Is that what happened? Yeah, common bugs since the start of the game, nice. Health bars didn't display if the game player resolution scale was set below 100%. Campaign changes, feel free to pause, I'm not a campaign player. General fixes, hotkey remapping. Added a new drag camera hotkey in the settings. Added camera Location hotkeys, yes. Toggle for control group exclusivity. A new hotkey to clear all control groups from selected units. To select all buildings by type. Added new hotkeys to cycle through and select all different buildings. New hotkeys to remove selected units from a specific hotkey group. Shift and alt keys have been unlocked. We read this at the top of the notes, right? Fix an issue where the quit game button in the pause menu did not work after match victory or defeat. Fix the bug where remapped camera panning hotkeys would not be applied until starting a new match. A lot of bug fixes. I'm, I'm reading some that were important to me. This one was uh, important. Bug fix. Society score didn't count. I wonder if they fixed Mongol and Delhi society score. Removed an invalid bonus damage type from the Holy Roman Men at Arms 2 handed actual charging. Huh. Interesting. This definitely seems like the type of patch the game really needed to get people excited about it again. Yes, I think so. Destroyed high trade house no longer produces deer until repaired. Roost monk units could spam the Saints Blade order confirmation audio while engaged. <laughs> we can no longer spam audio? Oh, and I never even got to abuse it. Other improvements. Improve the message notification for remapping conflicts and controls. Remap panel by making the banner red and having it stay on screen longer. Users should be able to... Do what I want is when a hotkey gets overwritten that I can click and go fix the hotkey that got changed instead of having to go and find it. So if I 
if I choose a new one for barracks and it says you've now deleted W from uh, from minimap ping, I want to be able to click something and go to minimap ping. Yeah, I, I used uh, camera hotkeys in StarCraft. I used F2, F3, F4, F5, but now I'm using those for landmarks. So I don't know what I'm gonna use yet. I need to do my hotkey setup soon. Improved UI narration, good. Keyboard layout should no longer be removed from the OS by the game. What's next? So what's next following the season one update? Well, for starters, we'll be paying attention to what you have to say about the changes in the forums and across various social channels. We also plan to send out a survey soon, asking some in-depth questions as we continue to refine and improve. Keep an eye out for that in the next few weeks. We'll plan to respond to any immediate callouts via a monthly patch if needed. And in the midterm, monthly patch, nice. And in the midterm are turning our attention to some of the features we discussed for season two, including a map veto system, a player color picker. Well, they say map vote system. That's not the same as veto, let's be specific. And additional hotkey work. The team has also heard your feedback about team game map sizes being too big. And we're looking to make some adjustments in this area. We want to test more internally, so it may not land in our next patch, but we're actively working on it. And that's it. All right. I'm excited. See you guys on stream. I should be live by now. This was quite a long video. And if not, very, very soon. Thanks for watching. And make sure to hit that sub button. I was very happy to see that many of you, if you've made it to this part in the video, many of you have checked my other videos on this special Age of Empires dedicated grubby YouTube channel. But not everyone is a sub. That's, that's not okay. We got over 3,000 views on those videos and only 1,500 subs. Smash that sub button so you know when next the video comes live. Thanks for watching. And Logan says good night as well. Thanks for waiting, Logan. Long patch notes, right? Yes. <laughs>